Hello, good afternoon everyone. Welcome to Auto by Rockwell Automation. This afternoon we're going to do a little uh, interactive demonstration of the Auto 100 and the staging cart, as well as its ability to adapt to some surprises that we're going to throw in its way, literally. A lot of conversations start in our booth, in our area here about, you know, well, are you an AGV? Are you an AMR? What's the difference? And the easiest way to think about it is an AGV is a very capable robot that is only able to do what it's told. So an AGV is given a set of instructions from the server side. It says, okay, I want you to do this. I'm going to give you this segment. Tell me we're done. I'm going to tell you to do the next thing. It's very regimented instruction, execute, respond, continue. An AMR, on the other hand, the map exists on the robot. The robot is given a goal from fleet manager. You know, this is the definition of the work that we want to do. And then the robot is free to decide how to get where it needs to go. So it understands where it is in the facility, not through reflectors or QR codes or uh, magnetic tape or whatever. It uses natural features, uh, walls, corners, legs, and a map that's recorded and it's able to understand where it is. It's able to plot a path from where it is, where it needs to go. In the map, there's layers of rules that it has to follow, one-way zone, stop sign, et cetera. And it uses those rules to come up with a plan that follows them and gets the job done. And what we'll find also is that it's quite tenacious. So if I get in its way, it's gonna turn around and go over there. So I wasn't part of its original plan. It's gonna to have to say, oh, I'm gonna change and adapt and go around. So in that way, it's flexible, it's smart, it's an independent kind of thinking in terms of the robot solves the problem, the server focuses on managing the work. So an AGV might be thought of as a train on tracks, really good for what it does, but not necessarily the right solution in every case. An AMR, might be considered more like a manual forklift driver where the software on the robot is the driver. Figuring out where it needs to go, adapting to surprises, and then overcoming and making a new plan and getting the job done. So this unit right here is the Auto 100, the capacity of 300, 330 pounds. In between the top and bottom stainless steel sections, there's a black band there. So inside that band is the uh, safety rated LIDAR that we use that sensor for two purposes. That sensor is used to perceive where we are. So I can see a wall, I can see a corner. It uses that data for localization. So it's able to say, okay, based on what I can sense, I can understand where in the building my X and Y yaw is at all times. As it's moving, it's constantly able to update in the map and understands where it's going. The other side is the safety side. So at Auto, we take the roles and responsibilities of hardware and software very seriously. Hardware is really good at doing specific things like safety. So in the hardware layer, we're able to understand how fast we're going, which way we're turning, and therefore how big a field we have to enforce. If we can grow it, we can shrink it depending on what we're doing. If that field is ever interrupted, then the LiDAR says, well, enough of that. Brakes get fired, power to the motor dies, and it comes to a stop. The hardware gets to decide that. It, that's its job. Software is attempting to drive as fast as robotically possible uh, while not breaking the rules that hardware enforces. The hardware never lets software do anything stupid. Software is going to try really, really hard to get the job done, and hardware is going to say, I don't care. There's a thing in my way. I'm killing the power and we're stopping. So there's that tension there on purpose. We want the software to try as hard as possible. We want the hardware to be safe. We get speed, we get safety. In addition to the LiDAR in that robot, we also have a camera. So we use the camera to help look for obstacles above and below the, uh, the plane of the LiDAR. LiDAR is the laser. Laser is really, really flat. So it's really good what it can see, but above and below, not so much. We use the camera, we use software to help find obstacles that might be above or below that plane of the laser. That's done through software. It's an augmentation. We're not going to say that it's a safety system, but it helps. Our software will do everything it possibly can to ensure that we understand those obstacles and we adapt and we navigate around them. 
the better way to understand how well this thing can behave is if we could actually have some volunteers here in the carpet. If there's anyone here on this side of the carpet would be willing to throw a couple of boxes into my trade show booth here. Go on. I want some obstacles in my trade show. Anywhere you want, just in the middle somewhere. A couple more. Chuck it in there. There you go, come on. Nice. So now we've got boxes that somebody, I always blame Bob and John, I don't know why. Bob's left a garbage bin. John left his tote on the floor. The AMR doesn't care. It understands the environment that it's in. It understands the goal of where it wants to go, in this case, parking. It understands through the sensor data that there's something in the way. The software says, well, I'm gonna to have to adapt and overcome. It says, okay, I'm gonna plan a new path, goes around, gets the job done. Software makes sure that the hardware never gets upset. We never break into that safety field. Software's job is to get as close as you can, but not too close. Fast as you can, but never unsafe. So in that way, we're able to perceive and adapt. So right now, what we have are 12 inch boxes, which is plenty high enough for the LiDAR to see. The LiDAR is, and this one is, I think about seven inches off the ground. How about we make this a little bit harder? So a couple more volunteers on the side, please. We got some four inch form cubes. Nice. Let's adapt and overcome. So it sees this guy turning around, sees me, has to thread the needle. So now it sees these two, sees the box, says, oh no, what do I do? I'm trapped. Makes a new path. So now you've got the laser, now you've got the camera. And now the software is saying, well, what do I do next? What do I do next? Go around. So in this way, we've got an AMR able to perceive not only its environment, understand its position, not only receive work orders, so to speak, from fleet manager and say, okay, this is my goal. It can plot a path from where it is to where it needs to go. It can see obstacles with its safety rated LIDAR. It can see obstacles with its camera and continue to adapt to its environment and get to where it needs to go and get the job done, finish the work. Hopefully you guys have been storing up questions that you might have uh, occurred to you during this uh, little walkthrough. So what questions might you have? I won't put the microphone in your face, I promise. You can just whisper them in my ear. Big hand waving so I know uh, who's trying to get my attention. What questions might you have that I can maybe expand upon? It doesn't have to be about the AMR. It could be about fleet manager. It could be about integration. Okay. So the question was, with respect to the safety system in particular, how high is the cutoff? So we use a planar LIDAR, so it is ankle height. So this one is seven inches. That one is uh, four or five, I can't remember which, and it is flat to the ground. There's actually a spec that we complied to, the 3691-4, I think, ISO, um, and it specifies the target. So I think it's a eight inch high target, small black cylindrical tube. You have to be able to see that with enough time to understand, stop, and not hit it. So that's, that's the, what we work for. The cameras, I don't know how high up they go, but they go pretty high as well as looking on the floor. Now that's not safety, to be fair, but it is used by our software. Any other questions? Oh, where are you gonna go? Questions, thoughts? Yes. How accurate a position can we get? And do we have any markers to help us out? This is actually a really challenging setup, I like it. Um, so global navigation, when the robot is just navigating your facility, it varies depending on how noisy the environment is. So map versus reality. Roughly speaking, plus or minus a couple, like one or two inches, depending on what's going on. We can get down to plus or minus 10 millimeters uh, with docking targets. So one really good example are these uh, yellow uh, targets here. So the robot will transition from a global frame to a local frame. It'll say, okay, I'm gonna ignore everything but these docking targets. And in that way, our final position is plus or minus 10. Same thing where we have a cart or a pallet. So we use global to get to kind of a, an initial position. And then we use the face of the pallet or we use the legs of the cart 
to kind of nail that final approach. Does that help? Cheers. Any other thoughts or questions or yes? So what's the smallest working envelope? How close can it get? The, the fields, the space that it needs varies depending on speed. But when it gets pretty slow and it pulls those fields all the way in, it can get really close. So, you know, it's an industrial robot. We have the ability to bring it in really close because we're in an environment where the employees will have been familiarized. Generally speaking, everybody has steel toes, so we can really pull that right in. Because we need to be able to get the job done and we can assume that people around us are aware of how these robots function. Yeah, so what happens when I'm trapped, basically, right? So what happens when we've completely surrounded with boxes that doesn't have a hope of getting out of where it is right now? So we have a number of ways that we can um, set Fleet Manager to be watching the work, and we can set time limits. So if you exceed a maximum duration, you can start calling for help. I think we can escalate once. So you call for help, and then there's like another five minutes, and then it escalates to like the plant manager or whatever. Um, work based on the work. But I mean, as you can see, the, the robots are pretty tenacious, so they won't stop trying. Any other thoughts or like questions or... Oh, please, hold on one second. Okay. So the question was more along the lines of deployment. So how long does it take? What changes are required? I'll start with the changes first. That's easier. Our robots communicate on Wi-Fi. Um, we very, very strongly recommend 5 gigahertz because uh, nobody likes 2.4. Uh, we, uh, almost all our customers prefer an on-premise server deployment. So we have the software that you can deploy on your server, virtual machine, install it up and running. So that's kind of all you need. Like you have a server, fleet manager runs on-premises, good Wi-Fi coverage, and then the robots are, you're up and running. With respect to how long it takes for a deployment, it depends. And I know that's not a great answer. A really simple deployment is take a robot, map your building, put a couple of cart endpoints, and you're done. Yeah, you could do that in less than half a day. I've done a demo like this where I included mapping, and I was moving a cart in nine minutes from a dead start. So it really, and then complexity grows. You can include integration with automation layers, with, you know, you have to do um, factory talk optics or maybe ignition or something for like a PLC integration. That will take longer, but it, you get better integration, better control. And then there's software APIs where you can start integrating with any kind of upper layer to do API calls, to do whatever you want. So kind of, it de I'm sorry, it depends. But it can be really fast. Any other thoughts or questions or, hey, what about this one thing I didn't know about? Last call. Okay. Well, thank you very much everyone for coming to uh, Auto by Rockwell Automation. We're gonna be uh, doing these demos again tomorrow. So if you wanted to bring somebody by to see it, we're, we'll be here. Thank you very much and have a wonderful day.